Hi, I'm Vabren Watts, and this is Psychiatric News, live from APA annual meeting held in New York City. Today, we have with us Dr. Konstantin Liketsos, Chair of Psychiatry at Johns Hopkins Bayview. Hi, Dr. Liketsos. Hi, how are you, Vabren? Doing great. So, we just listened to you talk about the effects of citalopram on agitation in treating Alzheimer's disease. So, how prevalent is Alzheimer's disease, and how prevalent is it predicted to be in the next 50 years? Right, what a great question. So, if you add up all the people 65 and older in the U.S., we expect about 10% to have dementia, with about two-thirds of that being Alzheimer's disease. If you look worldwide, based on how old we think the worldwide population is, in 2010, we thought there were about 35 million people worldwide with dementia. And every 20 years, that number is going to double. So in 2030, it'll be 70 million. And in 2050, it'll be well over 110 million. And all of these are new cases. So over the next 40 years or so, we'll have close to 200 million new people worldwide developing dementia. So during your talk, you talked about new options for treating agitation associated with Alzheimer's disease with selective serotonin reuptake receptors, SSRIs, in particular, citalopram. Why is this so important? It's important because as many as 40% of people with dementia develop very significant agitation over the course of their five to 10 year illness. And when they get agitation, in addition to their own suffering and the impact it has on their quality of life, um, the agitation affects the ability of the caregiver to look after them and is a very common reason for which they get placed in a nursing home. So getting good at treating agitation is a really big deal. We've relied for many years on using antipsychotics, both conventional and atypical. They work okay, but they're not great, and they have side effects. So we've needed new treatments. Our group, uh, which is a collaborative at eight universities, has been studying citalopram because of some preliminary data to suggest that it would help agitation. And we published a study earlier this year in JAMA suggesting that at 30 milligrams, it had a fairly robust benefit for agitation in people with Alzheimer's, and that that effect also translated to helping caregivers. So you talked about antidepressants um, used to alleviate agitation as well as your colleagues who's talked about other antidepressants to um, alleviate agitation. Why do you think there has not been an FDA approval for such symptoms? Well, first, I wouldn't think of them as antidepressants in this setting. That's how they, eventually, they originally got in the market. They're not working, if you will, because they're alleviating depression. They're working because of their effect on the brain. Uh, people with Alzheimer's have broken brains that are continuing to degenerate, and their serotonin systems are badly affected early on. We don't know whether this effect generalizes to other serotonin drugs. We know pretty confidently that it seems to affect citalopram. Why is there not FDA approval? Um, that's not a question I'm really an expert in answering. I, I don't think anybody's pursued it. Uh, FDA approval requires a lot of money, uh, and generally speaking, as somebody being able to recoup their investment, and I'm not sure that any of the, these drugs really have that patent protection that would get it. Um, nevertheless, I think it's important to continue to study serotonin mechanisms to improve agitation in Alzheimer's. Stay tuned for more Psychiatric News Live from the annual meeting in New York City.